Hi, it's great to be here. Um, Nomi and I have been collaborating since 2004 on film installation and new media projects that examine power and politics, um, uh, how people manage and who, they get, and who gets heard. Um, we met at Mills and we've been working and living together ever since. Um, so six years ago we started to work with the families of prisoners on death row. And what began as a single project is produced in collaboration with Community Resource Initiative, which is a non-profit organization that supports death row inmates and their families has evolved into a series of projects that had international reach. So we asked CRI, um, which is actually um, an organization that uh, Nomi worked with doing videos and other media work for them, um, interviewing families uh, for testimony for um, court cases, um, if they would like to work with us. And thanks to Grid Work Fund, um, we began the project in collaboration with three families. We began working to tell their stories through a series of short video projects and a collaborative interactive platform for use educational advocacy tool. So when we started, we were thinking we were going to do something about hesitations and silences and stuttering. And that was before we actually began interviews with our families. What we realized was that they were incredibly articulate and their stories needed to be told. So what we thought was going to be a, um, this is one of the, uh, the main um, subjects of our film, what we thought was going to be a, um, a piece about silence actually became a piece that was a, a linear narrative. So all of a sudden we found ourselves um, doing video-based pieces and finally a film project. Um, so we began interviewing them, collaborating with the families, and, uh, and did a series of projects. So we did a piece, um, several um, pieces for local galleries, and then we did a piece at MAP 13 in Texas. And we were invited by Yerba Buena Center for the Arts to do an interactive piece um, where we started looking at bringing other communities in and asking, how could you use this work that we're doing? So um, veterans organizations, um, anti-death penalty advocacy groups, we started working with uh, re-entry programs and, and people in education and also youth, saying, well, what do you want to do with these projects? Um, we uh, got some film grants, and we ended up uh, completing a 32 animated film called Last Day of Freedom, which tells the story of one man. His name's Bill Babbitt, and he, he basically um, stood by his brother, a uh, Vietnam vet who came back, was, um, realized his brother had committed a crime and went to the police. Um, he actually ultimately was um, given the death penalty and um, executed on his 50th birthday after being given a Purple Heart. So uh, we told that story um, with Bill. And we made it, the film is made up of 32,000 drawings. Um, it took us two years to draw it. Um, and so what I want to do is uh, show you a little bit from it, and then Nomi's going to talk about some of the other um, contexts. Um, what happened with the film, which was pretty amazing for us, we premiered it at Full Frame, North Carolina, where it won the Jury Award for Best Short, which qualified us for the Oscars. And so um, it was the first documented an animated documentary to be awarded an Oscar nomination uh, since in the last 45 years. It also won the IDA Best Short Award. It launched Chile California's KQED and uh, managed to win a regional Emmy. It's now on Netflix. And uh, it had theatrical release uh, with the other shorts, uh, 200 theaters. So um, it was described by IndieWire as a searing study of our most pressing social issues. So let me play you a little bit and then, then we will talk about some of the ideas connected to it. The cops told me, oh, he's not going to get the death penalty. This is not a death penalty case. They really believed that Manny would not go to death row. We had to go down to uh, talk to a lawyer. I trusted this lawyer because... Um, he looked like one of those lawyers you see on TV. I mean, he was tall, he was blonde, fancy suit on. I'm thinking he's about something. He had an office right on the right across the street from the county courthouse. I'm thinking this is cool, you know, he's a good lawyer. He told us what the case was. He says, they got special circumstances on your brother. They're going for the death penalty. I go, what? But, 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 the, but the cops, this is the cop. He knew this, this won't be no death penalty case. He'll go to a hospital. Well, the cops did not deliberately lie to me. But when the district attorney got a hold of it, she thought otherwise. Political season. When it's time to pick the cherries, time to pick the oranges, you head for the fields. And you start picking. And you enrich yourself. And that's what they did with the death penalty. When I asked
ask the lawyer during the court. I says, I don't see any blacks being seated on the jury. He told me that he did not trust. He used the N word. I guess he must have figured he could use the nigger word and feel comfortable. So just a few thoughts and, and comments regarding um, you know, uh, public and audience engagement. Uh, first of all, the court, which um, we think it, it's, we thought of as another um, public arena where people get to tell the stories and hoping that becomes a convincing narrative. So you have these two stories that basically from both sides and they're, convin and, and they're trying to convince the, uh, first of all, a small audience to, to basically accept them as being uh, the main narrative or the truth. Um, and Bill was not able to, to deliver his story there, which left him in a state of trauma, and his untold story haunted him for decades. And one of the things is like we were able to work with him, and he became, uh, for us, like uh, the main collaborator, participator, and probably um, the first audience for the film, and that was really a healing uh, experience for him. Um, and our responsibility for Bill, I don't know if this is working, our responsibility for him and his story uh, brings to mind Emmanuel Levinas' quote, the bond, with, uh, the bond with others only made his responsibility. Um, and um, on the verge of, I'm gonna skip a whole section here, on the, on the verge of starting our next project, uh, which is um, based in Georgia, there are many issues that are raised throughout the story, um, but some of, the, some of them might be very specific, like, um, let's say the quality of uh, defense that people get when uh, you live in a state or you're being uh, convicted in a state that has all the public defenders being defunded. And it's something that uh, we'll consider as being uh, very important to us and actually the um, support that we got through this film and the exposure to audience actually help it out. Can I just name the, the last thing? Just the, the things that we're thinking of in, you know, on the verge of st st starting a new thing is how can we work, how can we make this work meaningful and what does it mean to us? Uh, who is the community, who is the audience, where, the, where is the work going to be seen, and who can benefit from it. And again, for us, it was beyond just art and film audience. Hopefully, we'll get to you.